The air in your house might be toxic, but the good news is I'm gonna show you how to fix it, so stick around. I'm Travis and this is how I do things, and in this video I'm gonna test a bunch of things to see if I can reduce the formaldehyde levels in my home. I recently picked up this air quality meter for my shop, but I thought it'd be fun to bring in the house and see how my air quality was. Much to my surprise, my air quality in my five-year-old home was poor. What the heck? I checked all over the house and the HCHO levels were high everywhere. 0 0.15. 0 0.1 milligrams per cubic meter is the upper end of the range for acceptable HCHO levels. What the heck is HCHO? HCHO is formaldehyde. It's an irritant and considered to be a human carcinogen and can potentially cause lung cancer. But is that really that big of a deal? Well, it turns out for the past few years, I've had a dry cough that won't go away. My eyes burn and I've had nose and throat irritation. I just thought I had allergies. Well, guess what? Those are all symptoms of higher than normal levels of formaldehyde and VOCs in the air. So where in the heck are all these poisons coming from? The answer is just about everywhere in your home. I checked every room in my home and I found the highest levels of formaldehyde were in rooms that had a lot of material that we wash, especially in the laundry room. So I might try a more natural laundry detergent. So what other things in your home have formaldehyde? Pretty much anything in your home that is manufactured and not natural has some formaldehyde in it and will gas off over the next few years after you buy it. Some of the biggest culprits are pressed wood products like plywood and particle board used in your subfloor. Some spray foam insulation like what most homes have in their walls, wallpaper and paint, furniture and synthetic materials, manufactured cabinets, flooring like laminate, engineered hardwood and carpet, gas burning appliances, and even some of the cleaners you use in your home. So what can you do about it? If it was used in the construction of your home, it's already there, but the levels should go down as your home ages. So time will help a little bit. However, if you're buying anything new for your home, ask questions about what sort of certifications it's passed, saying it has acceptable levels of formaldehyde and VOCs. Next, when you do buy something, let it sit in the garage for a few days to gas off. If something smells new, it's probably formaldehyde and VLCs gassing off. <sighs> Don't you love that new house smell? Let's start with something easy to improve air quality. If you have ceiling fans, turn them on. That helps circulate the air a little bit. However, you're mostly just circulating the toxic gases and not really getting rid of them. One of the easiest things you can do to improve your indoor air quality is to just open up some windows. But that only works if the outdoor air quality is good, so pay attention to that. Okay, check this out. I set up my air quality meter with all the windows closed. Then I opened just a few windows, and after an hour, I saw a dramatic reduction in both formaldehyde and VOCs. My Dyson air purifier is off, but it's still collecting data, and you can really visualize the improvement by looking at this data. However, when I close the windows, the levels return in about four or five hours. Those are pretty amazing results. However, I realize you cannot leave your windows open all the time. It could be raining, it could be cold out, could be snowing, your kid could be screaming his head off, whatever. Making the house cooler and less humid can also lower the formaldehyde levels. So if it's summer, you can turn on your AC for a bit. Unfortunately, at this time of year in the Midwest, it's not quite hot enough to run the AC, so I couldn't properly test this, but in theory it should work. Next, I set my HVAC fan to run continuously. The thought is that this will help circulate the air and then run it all through the HVAC filter. For this test, I'll just be using a standard high quality HVAC filter. After about 12 hours, there was a very minor drop, but the temperature has also dropped, so I would say the improvement was negligible. Even though this is a very small improvement, the data on my air purifier did show this improvement, which is kind of interesting. By the way, my air purifier is still off. So then I wanted to take this idea to the next level. So I went to discountfilters.com and I ordered this carbon filter, which claims to reduce chemical vapors in your home. So let's give this a try. This filter just replaces the regular filter. Strangely, after 24 hours, the levels were actually higher. Of course, I'm doing all these tests in my home, so it's kind of hard to create an isolated test environment. So while we were cooking last night, I noticed that the levels spiked pretty high. So it was kind of hard to tell if the carbon filter was actually doing its job or not. So I'm gonna have to call this test inconclusive. I do have an air exchanger, which has been off for a few days. So I cleaned the filters and set it to run almost continuously for 24 hours. 
Just for fun, I put the air quality meter inside of the air exchanger. When I put it on the exhaust side, it did show the air going out was toxic. It also showed the air it was bringing in was clean, so I know it's helping a little bit. Wow, that was a pretty good improvement going from 0.14 to 0.09. So this officially puts my home's air quality in the good range. The next thing I tried is a cheaper air purifier that was advertised to remove formaldehyde. That didn't go so well. The levels didn't go down even a tiny bit. In fact, they might have even gone up. What I really hated about the cheaper air purifier is that its sensor actually said the air quality was good. So after some research, I figured out that the cheaper air purifiers only have a sensor that measures particulates, not formaldehyde. That doesn't do me any good. So I returned that one and I bought this. This Dyson formaldehyde air purifier not only can sense formaldehyde, it has a special filter that breaks down the formaldehyde at a molecular level and turns it into water and carbon dioxide. When the air quality was really bad, this thing lowered the formaldehyde levels significantly. But after about two hours, I did not see any noticeable improvement this time around in the bedroom. I think all the other improvements I made made it harder to make a noticeable difference. However, after the purifier has been running in my office for a few days, I noticed the lowest numbers I've seen so far. Even though these are pretty expensive, I was super impressed, so I ended up buying one for each of the rooms I spend the most time in. If you're interested in one, I put a link down below. So while making this video, I learned a lot about air quality and the potential chemicals that could be lurking in your home. I tested a lot of things and some of the best things you can do to remove formaldehyde and other chemicals from inside your home are to pay attention to the things you put in your home, open windows and turn on the fans whenever you can, set your HVAC systems fan to run continuously and make sure you have a high quality filter. When cooking with a gas appliance, be sure to turn on the vent fan. If you can afford one, an air exchanger will get rid of some of the bad air and bring in some fresh air. Get yourself a Dyson formaldehyde and put one in every room you spend a lot of time in. And by the way, I paid full price for these, not a sponsor. Well, thanks very much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys have a healthier home as a result. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if I missed something, please leave me a comment and let me know. See you guys.